my initial impression that the church was empty was then succeeded by an entirely different impression. I suddenly felt this church is not empty but full, full of invisible worshippers. I could not see them, but I felt their presence. There came to me an overwhelming conviction this small congregation is being taken up into an action far greater than itself. We are being assumed into the worship of the Church in Heaven. I felt uh, the angels are here, the saints are here, the Mother of God is here and Christ himself is with us. So I had a feeling that this service, humble outwardly, was in fact united with the worship of the total church on earth and in heaven. I felt that this congregation of which I had become part, this action that we were performing together was heaven on earth. I didn't understand the service because it was all in Slavonic, of which I then knew nothing. But I nonetheless felt this invisible presence of the heavenly church. I felt that we were part of eternity. So that was my initial contact with the Orthodox Church. I came to meet it not through reading books, that came later, not through meeting other Orthodox, that came later, but I experienced Orthodoxy through an act of worship. Exactly, I experienced the Orthodox Church as a worshipping community. That I found a very good way to start. And from the beginning, from that initial service in the Russian Church in London, I had the feeling, I have come home. This is where I belong. Now, what did I experience on Patmos and on Mount Athos? Mm -hmm. In the monastery, first of all, we have the divine office, the appointed services of the church when we meet together in the main church of the monastery and we meet particularly in the early hours of the day. That is something very widespread in many religious traditions, Christian and non-Christian, to pray particularly in the period before dawn. On Patmos and on Mount Athos, the services start roughly around two or three in the morning. It varies according to the time of year. And the main services of the day are lasting about uh, two to three hours. So we start the day praying in darkness. And when we finish, it is just about sunrise. On the holy mountain of Athos, every day the divine liturgy, the Eucharist, is celebrated in Patmos only on certain days. But it is the divine liturgy, the Eucharist, which is the heart 
of the liturgical worship of every Christian, but particularly of the monk. Mm -hmm. But the related services also form an essential part of the monastic life. So this was what I first of all experienced on Patmos and on my visits to the Holy Mountain. The daily worship, morning and then in the afternoon and evening, the cycle of fasts and feasts. But the second thing that I learnt through my life in the monastery was private prayer. The monk is required not merely to worship together with his brethren in church, but he's also um, expected to pray by himself in his cell. And the form of prayer that he would chiefly use is the Jesus prayer is a short invocation Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. That is the usual form. But there are variants. You can say, have mercy on me, a sinner. Or you can put it in the plural, have mercy on us. And that's the form that I myself prefer to use. There is a rich tradition concerning the saying of the Jesus Prayer. It is a repetition, but of course it is not a vain repetition. Christ warned us against vain repetitions, but in the case of the Jesus Prayer, it is to be said with faith and love and with a vivid awareness of the direct presence of Jesus Christ before us and within us. So this was the main form of daily prayer in the cell, which I also learnt about alongside the worship in church. So that was what I have taken away from my time in Patmos and on the holy mountain of Athos. I first learnt about the Jesus Prayer through reading a little book that is very widely known, The Way of a Pilgrim. That's been translated into English for the best part of a century, and there are a number of different versions. It is an account of a Russian uh, pilgrim who goes from monastery to monastery. He's apparently a layman, and he's very struck by the words in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 pray without ceasing how is it possible he asks himself to make prayer not just an occasional activity but something that enters into everything else that we do something that is somehow present with us throughout the day and the night. And for a long time he doesn't get an answer, how can this be done, until eventually he meets an elder, a staretz in Russian, meaning a spiritual guide, who tells him about the Jesus Prayer. And 
So after that, as he wanders through the forest alone, he says the Jesus prayer many times. This story, which is recounted very vividly in the way of a pilgrim, caught my imagination. Now, of course, I am not a wandering Russian peasant, <laughs> um, and I have many other responsibilities. So I've never tried to say the Jesus prayer continually in the way he did. I would say the Jesus prayer only for quite a short time, perhaps half an hour at a time. But having read in the way of a pilgrim about the Jesus prayer, even before I had become Orthodox, I began using this prayer. So it was this experience of the Jesus prayer which was an important factor drawing me to the Orthodox Church. More broadly, I was very attracted by the whole mystical tradition within Orthodoxy, the more I read about it. But above all, what led me to become Orthodox was a feeling that here is the fullness of the Christian faith. I was troubled by the diversity of opinion that exists within the Church of England. Freedom is a precious quality, yes, but how are we to combine freedom with unity? As a High Church Anglican, my faith was very close to that of the Orthodox Church, but I recognised that there were many other Anglicans who didn't think the way I did. And by becoming Orthodox, I did not really change my faith, but I found the secure basis for my faith. I could say, <coughs> you can eliminate these costs. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I could say as an Orthodox, not just this is the form of faith that I have myself chosen, but this is the faith of the Church. So I turned to Orthodoxy because I found there a fullness not to be found elsewhere. But I've always continued to be grateful for the elements of Christian life that I learnt as an Anglican.